Hi folks, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. Uh, today I will cover a topic which uh, is quite common. I'm going to talk about what is fatty liver and what's its uh, general significance to health. Fatty liver is a condition where there's fat in the liver. The liver is an organ that sits up here under the ribcage and helps in digestion, helps in storage of uh, nutrients. And this is a model here of a liver. Normal liver looks like this and in the middle section where you see the yellow that's where how the liver would look if there's fat in the liver fat in the liver uh, is defined uh, as uh, fat without any associated condition like alcohol or other congenital diseases or medications like steroids which also put fat into the liver fatty liver is defined as having greater than five percent of the liver being fatty tissue and if there's inflammation uh, that's set off in the liver by the body's own system because of the fat it's called NASH so there's a little difference between fatty liver and NASH NASH is where there's inflammation and that's reflected in the blood by some abnormal tests if we look at how common it is it is indeed very common about 25 percent or one in four people in our country have fatty liver and about a fifth of them which is about five percent uh, of the general population can have inflammation or NASH. So there's a little difference between having just fat and having inflammation. So again, uh, one in four people would have fatty liver and about a fifth of that percentage will have inflammation. There are some risk factors uh, that have been uh, associated uh, with uh, fatty liver and uh, these are common conditions such as obesity, diabetes, having high cholesterol. There's a condition called metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is a condition where one needs to have one of these three features. If the waist circumference in men is greater than 102 or 88 centimeters in women, if the blood triglycerides are greater than 150, if the good cholesterol which is the HDL cholesterol is less than 40 in men and less than 50 in women and if the blood pressure the higher part of the blood pressure is greater than 130 having uh, uh, three or more of this puts them in puts us into a condition called metabolic syndrome and that predisposes to fatty liver there are other conditions such as polycystic ovarian disease and some endocrine conditions such as hypothyroidism there's a gland here called pituitary there's a gland here called thyroid any of these things that go off can cause it uh, along uh, with uh, having sleep apnea all of these can put one at risk for fatty liver the concern with fatty liver is that by causing scarring it can cause problems but there's also associated conditions that go up with it such as heart disease and strokes go up, cancer-related mortality goes up, and liver cancer goes up. In fact, it's the third most cause, common cause of liver cancer. The initial evaluation includes getting some blood work to make sure there are no other causes of fatty liver. The other thing that we need to make sure is that there's no alcohol overlap. But the key is to try to figure out where one falls. Is this just fat here or is this just a scarred liver? Has one gone from a fatty liver to a scarred liver? And that we can do by means of either a blood test or a special scan that we do called fiber scan. Occasionally, we have to do a liver biopsy. Treatment, treatment in general is treatment of the risk factors including losing weight uh, and treatment of other cholesterol, etc. About 5% of weight loss is necessary to make a dent. 10% is what really makes a dent uh, and uh, allows one to have improvement in liver inflammation. Vitamin E is mildly helpful, but there's a slight increased risk of prostate cancer that goes up with vitamin E daily use, so I haven't been using it in our practice. People who meet indications for bariatric surgery or weight loss surgery can be a consideration. There are other drugs such as omega-3 fatty acids, etc., which have not been shown to be helpful. Of course, management of any other cardiovascular risk factors such as hypertension and diabetes are quite helpful. And very rarely people who end up having cirrhosis, uh, if they meet criteria, liver transplantation can be an option. So in summary, uh, fatty liver uh, is a common condition, but quick recognition and modification of risk factors can help. 
My next post will be about cirrhosis of the liver. In other words, what happens if the liver becomes scarred? What do we need to look for? What happens? What's the significance of that? Thank you. Um, I hope to see you next week.